Hey everyone, Alex here at The Code Wolf again. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to explore some additional new Blazor features in the upcoming .NET 8 release. Specifically, we're going to look at the different rendering modes that are available when you're working with those new Blazor server-side rendering capabilities. We'll learn how to combine Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server circuits with the new server-side rendering to achieve full-stack development with just Blazor. This means we'll see how to render page components on the back end while adding rich client interactivity to the front end wherever we need it. Also, please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel. Now, as an important side note, remember that Blazor server-side rendering is a new and completely different thing than Blazor server, which relies on WebSockets and SignalR and has been a part of Blazor since the beginning. If you aren't familiar with the new Blazor server-side rendering pattern in .NET 8, I have a video dedicated to just that topic in depth linked below that I'd recommend you check out first. However, I'll also briefly review some of that info in this video where it makes sense. So if you are already familiar with Blazor in general, you'll probably still be able to follow along without that video. Either way, let's dive in and get started. For this video, I'm using an example project provided by the .NET team that is already set up to highlight different types of Blazor rendering models. This sample project is also linked in the video description, so just clone or download that and you'll be able to follow along. Over in Visual Studio Code, I have that project open, so let's look at a few concepts here. First, note that this app is divided into two projects, one for the client and one for the server. Generally speaking, if you plan to use Blazor server-side rendering in combination with the other hosting models, you'll want to put whatever components you want to render in the browser using WebAssembly inside the client project and components you want to render on the back end in the server project. The reason we have two projects currently is because if you think about it, the WebAssembly and server-side versions of your app are really two entirely different build outputs and compiled code bases. WebAssembly runs in the browser while server-side components run on the server. Originally, the .NET team aimed to have a unified project structure where it could sort of adapt the build targets and output to create both versions from the same project, but as of .NET 8, that is not fully implemented. Maybe we'll see that in .NET 9. Anyways, let's look at the server project to start with, specifically the program.cs file. Inside here, there are a couple of blocks of code we want to focus on. Together, these snippets handle three tasks. They set up our server-side component rendering, our Blazor server rendering using SignalR, and our WebAssembly rendering. Map Razor Components is of particular interest to us at the moment, since that's the code that registers the different routable components in our project for server-side rendering. A routable component is just any component in our project that includes the at page directory with a URL path set, such as our weather component here. Now, by configuring all three approaches, we can switch between any of these rendering options in .NET 8 seamlessly on a per component basis. This is pretty cool. Of course, you can also remove one if you don't want it, such as removing the WebAssembly registrations if you don't want to support any WebAssembly functionality in your app at all. We can see how this works in practice by examining the components in our project more closely. First, let's check out the home.razor page. As you can see, there's nothing all that interesting going on here, except for that app page directive at the top. Because we have the new server-side rendering feature enabled for our project, this component will be routed to and rendered server-side when the home page is requested. The rendered HTML markup will be sent to the browser as one complete response, just like we've had for a long time in MVC or Razor pages or really any server-side UI framework. The same goes for our weather component, here we just have a slash weather endpoint, and that will make sure this component is rendered out on the server. Things start to get a little more interesting if we open up the counter component. Now, notice that this counter component actually references another counter component that lives in the client project. That's because the counter component in the server project is just a placeholder that wraps the counter in the client project. As of .NET 8 Preview 7, you can't directly navigate to components in other project assemblies, as this comment explains. In a near future release, we should be able to exclude this wrapper component and just reference the counter that lives in our client project directly. Anyway, the main point of interest here is the render mode attribute on the client counter component. The render mode tells Blazor which type of rendering to use for that component. That's right, if we want to add more dynamic interactivity on a per component basis, 
we can now specify whether to use WebAssembly or Blazor Server with SignalR circuits. Right now this is set to auto, but for now, let's change this to render mode.server to make it easier to demonstrate some concepts. Then let's run the app to inspect how all this behaves in the browser. Once the site loads, let's open up our dev tools to inspect this a bit closer. Under the application tab, let's first make sure to clear out our site data. Then let's switch to our network tab and enable the WebSocket filter first. And then let's refresh this page. Notice how there's actually no activity at all on the WebSocket tab. Our component was completely rendered server side and then sent back as a complete HTML response, again, similar to what we had in the past with Razor Pages or MVC. It's not using WebAssembly or SignalR like in the traditional Blazor server hosting model. And if we click over to the WebAssembly filter, there's also no activity there either because none of our components are even set up to use WebAssembly right now. We can see this same behavior if we switch over to our weather component. Even though this page retrieves data, that was also all done server side without any rich interactivity set up with the browser. Well, now let's see what happens if we click over to our counter component. And there it is. Immediately we see a Blazor circuit was set up to the backend process that's hosting this app. As we click the button, the counter goes up and those updates are all happening over this new Blazor circuit. Now let's switch over to VS Code and see what the same scenario looks like if we switch this component to instead use render mode.webassembly. So I'll change that quick and then let's stop the app and then use .NET Run to launch it again. After that loads in the browser, again, make sure to clear your site data over in the application tab of the DevTools and clear out any history in the network tab for a fresh start. Then let's refresh the homepage and sure enough, still no WebSocket or WebAssembly activity on the homepage. The same holds true if we navigate over to the weather page again as well, still no activity on either. However, let's see what happens this time when we click on the counter component. Sure enough, there's no WebSocket activity this time, but under our WebAssembly tab, we can see a whole set of resources was downloaded in order to execute this component in the browser using WebAssembly. Now, thankfully, basically all of these resources get cached for subsequent requests. So if we clear this out and then keep refreshing the page, you can see there's no additional resource requests. However, we can still verify over in the console tab that the WebAssembly loader is indeed at work to render this page. Now, if we switch back to VS Code, there's also a setting available called Auto, which is what the project was configured for originally. Auto is unique in the sense that it will decide automatically for you whether to use Blazor server or WebAssembly to render this component. For example, if the user has not yet downloaded all of the Blazor WebAssembly assets, it will start up a Blazor circuit first to render the component, since that's quicker for the first time load, and then it will still download the WebAssembly assets in the background. On subsequent requests from then on, it would load the page initially using WebAssembly, since the assets would already be there then. One other thing I want to point out is that you can actually define the render mode in the component itself, rather than setting it as an attribute where it's referenced like we are here. So for example, if I were to open our weather component, which remember is being rendered entirely server side right now, we can actually explicitly set this component to use Blazor server rendering with signal R in our circuits instead. We can add an attribute at the top here for a server render mode, so that anytime this component is routed to or rendered from another component, it will always use Blazor server. Let's run the app to test this out. Back on our homepage in the browser network tools, we can again see the page loaded as usual without any use of WebAssembly or Blazor server signal R circuits. However, this time when we click to our weather page, now we can see a Blazor server circuit was spun up to render this page over signal R thanks to that attribute we added. The Blazor server hosting model we've always had in Blazor is now at work here. So at this point, you might still have a lot of questions. Can we still create Blazor projects entirely in WebAssembly or Blazor server and just ignore all this new server-side rendering? Can we switch between these options after we've started a project? Can we upgrade existing projects to .NET 8 without worrying about any of these new features? And perhaps most importantly, how and when do I decide which rendering modes or hosting models to use? Well, let's start with the short answers first. Yes, in .NET 8, you can still create Blazor projects that are entirely based around WebAssembly or Blazor server with SignalR circuits, just like you always have, no worries there. And yes, you can always change your architecture later. 
Also, yes, you can also just version bump upgrade all of your existing projects to .NET 8 without any breaking changes. In terms of choosing a project rendering or architecture approach, going forward, you have a few options here. If you want your site to be entirely client-side and able to be statically hosted, a full WebAssembly approach is still a valid and supported option. However, in many scenarios, you may want to consider a new hybrid or full-stack architecture like we just looked at built around server-side rendering. This approach gives you that full-stack solution with a lot of flexibility. You can quickly render your main or core page components on the server without WebAssembly download times or a SignalR dependency. Then you can just start choosing on a per component basis when to add rich interactivity as you need it using either the WebAssembly or Blazor server hosting models or both. Visual Studio and .NET will also provide out of the box starter project templates for both of these scenarios. So I hope this clarifies a lot of what's going on with Blazor rendering in .NET 8. Please hit subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you next time.